हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू वीडियो सॉल्यूशंस ऑफ सोल्यूशन ऑफ जे एडवांस टू थाउजेंड फिजिक्स पेपर टू एज वी विल मूव ऑन थ्रू द पेपर यू विल सी द पेपर वाज फ्रॉम मॉडरेट टू टफर सेक्शन ड्यू टू लेंदियर कैलकुलेशंस एंड ट्रिकी एप्लीकेशंस यू विल सी मोर पोर्शन ऑफ इलेवेंथ इन दिस पेपर एज कंपेयर टू ट्वेल्थ वन सो लेट्स टेक अ वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट इज क्वेश्चन नंबर वन सो फ्रेंड्स वील स्टार्ट विद सेक्शन वन द वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वी सी इज फ्रॉम द चैप्टर रे ऑप्टिक्स नॉ हियर एज पर द क्वेश्चन थ्री ग्लास सिलेंडर्स ऑफ इक्वल हाइट थर्टी सेंटीमीटर एंड सेम रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ वन पॉइंट फाइव आर प्लेस्ड ऑन हॉरिजोंटल सर्फेस एज शोन इन द फिगर वेयर सिलेंडर वन हैज अ फ्लैट टॉप सिलेंडर टू एंड थ्री हैव कॉन्वेक्स एंड कॉन्केव टॉप रेस्पेक्टिवली The radius of curvature of the two curved tops are same that is 3 meters. If h1, h2 and s3 are the apparent depths of point x on the bottom of the three cylinders respectively, we have to find the correct statement among the four options given to us. So this is the diagram we were talking about and these are the options. Now if you see the solution this is a flat surface and this object can be observed here due to the part of apparent shift so let's mark this as the new position and the distance from here to here would be h1 right now here let's assume that it appears at this point at x double dash and this point here marks as pole this is h2 now here if you see let's assume again that this is the third place this being the pole and this is h3 so we need to find the values of h1 h2 and s3 so that we can find which is the best suitable options so let's start with the very first case that is case 1 now case 1 when you look upon it it's very easy that h1 would be equal to real depth upon the refractive index so it is 30 divided by 3 by 2 and you will easily get 20 cm so the first one that is h1 we have as 20 cm when you talk about case 2 now many of you will be confused here so it's quite easy to understand that this is a curved surface and for curved surface we have a fixed formula that is equals to mu2 by v minus mu1 by u is equals to mu2 minus mu1 by r now the image will be formed or the light rays will be going outside in the air so that is 1 upon v minus the refractive index of the medium divided by minus of 30 cm why because the distance of the object from pole is 30 cm and we are taking this upwards as a positive convention so it becomes minus 30 and from here you will say 1 minus 3 by 2 divided by minus of 300 cm right now when you solve this you will get v as 20.68 cm which would be equal to h2 so we have h2 as well now when you talk about the third surface this one which is a concave one the only difference in this equation you will see is in spite of minus 300 it will be plus 300 as the surface is having a different curvature so case 3 when you will solve mu2 by v minus mu1 by u is equals to mu2 minus mu1 by r and let's put down the values you will get 3 by 2 minus 30 this is 1 minus 3 by 2 now this time it is plus 300 friends now when you solve this you will get 19.35 cm which will be h3 right now let's look upon the options we have we have all the values and we have h1 as 20 cm h2 as 20.68 cm and h3 as 19.35 cm right Now, when you see the difference between H two and H one, it would be only 0.68 centimeter. So this option is wrong. When you see the second one, that is H two greater than S three, yes, it does satisfies the condition. S three greater than H one, no, that would be wrong, and this would be right. So what is the answer to this question? It would be option B and D. I hope you have understood the question. The question, due to its lengthy calculations, will be segmented on the moderate section. Now let's move on to the next question. That is question number two. 
Now the question you see belongs to chapter system of particles that is rotational motion. Here a thin and uniform rod of mass capital M and length capital L is held vertical on a floor with large friction. Similar kind of questions have been coming into JE but at that case is the smooth floor was there. But here it's large friction that's the notable point. Now the rod is released from rest so that it falls by rotating about its contact point with the floor without slipping. That means this point of contact is behaving as a hinge. Now which of the following statement is or are correct when the rod makes an angle 60 degree with the vertical. This is the important point where g is the acceleration due to gravity. Let's see. So among the four options we have, we have to choose which one would be correct. So let's get to the diagram first so that we can understand it. Let's start with solution. In order for you to understand, let's have a diagram with us first. Let's take this as a floor and let's mark this as vertical, right? Now you have a rod like structure like this. Now let's take this rod and orient it like this and shift it like here. So this rod you see is hinged at this point right at an angle of what 60 degree with the vertical where weight will be pointed directly downwards mg. Normal reaction will be acting upwards right and this rod will be falling like this. The rod's length is L. So the center of mass is at a distance of what to say L by 2 from let's take this as origin. Now if you see the very first point is what is the torque which is acting on the body. So you will say torque would be equal to mg into the perpendicular distance that would be L by 2 sin 60 right. When you solve this, you will get simply mgl by 2 into root 3 by 2, right? This is torque. And this torque is also equals to I alpha, where this rod is rotating about this hinge at its corner point. So moment of inertia about this point would be ml square by 3. So when you solve this, you will get mgl root 3 by 4 is equals to m l square by 3 into alpha. When you solve this, you will get this and this will be cancelled, this and this will be cancelled. So alpha would be simply 3 root 3 g by 4 l. So this is the angular acceleration of the rod at this point of time. Now when you see what is the value of omega here. So the center of mass initially it was at this level. Now it is at this level, so there is a change in height, let's say this is delta h. This change in height will lead to conversion of potential energy into the rotational kinetic energy and the potential energy change is very easy to arrange here or find here that is delta u would be equal to mg delta h or I can write mg l by 2 that is I am talking about the center of mass 1 minus cos 60. And it would be simply mgl by 4. So I have delta u with us and this would be equal to half i omega square. Again moment of inertia would be ml square by 3. So when you find omega you will find omega would be 3g by 2l. So you have angular speed as well with you. So now we have angular acceleration we have omega. Now let's see which are the options we are talking about. So when you see the very first option. The angular acceleration of the rod will be 2g by L. No, this would be wrong. The radial acceleration, so we have not found it yet. Let's talk about the third option here. The angular speed of the rod would be under root 3g by 2L. Yes, this one is correct. The normal reaction, we have not found it yet. So now we are left with to find the radial acceleration and the normal reaction. Let's start with the radial acceleration part. When you talk about the radial acceleration, it's a pretty simple formula that radial acceleration Let's take it as AR, right? Will be given by omega square L by 2, right? And this would be under root of 3G upon 2L whole square into L by 2. This would be 3 
g upon 2l into l by 2. So, when you find this, you will get 3g by 4 as the value of radial acceleration, right? So, if you match the second option as well, you will find that the second option is also correct. So, we have two options till now correct. Now, we are left with normal reaction. In order to understand the normal reaction, it is most important part that we understand that mg is acting downwards normal reaction is acting upwards so this system will have a vertical acceleration av now we need to find this av we have the radial acceleration inwards ar and definitely there will be also a acceleration of center of mass that would be equal to alpha into l by 2 right so if we can find the value of av it would be easier to find the normal reaction by the relation mg minus n would be equal to m a v now in order to find a v if you understand this angle is 60 degree this would be also 60 degree and this would be also 30 degree right now if you put down the values you can easily find that a v will be equal to a c o m sin 60 and a r cos 60 right when you solve this one you will get av as 15 g by 16 now friends it's easy to find now that mg minus n would be equal to m into 15 g by 16 so normal reaction would be simply mg by 16 right now let's see which is the left option whether it is correct or not so as per the fourth option the normal reaction force from the floor on the rod will be mg by 16 so yes it is correct so among the four options which were given to us apart from option a b c and d all three are correct so the right answer to this question would be option b c and d and due to the lengthier calculations this question will fall from moderate to tougher section I hope you have understood this question. Now let's move on to our next question that is question number 3.